Salutations and good morrow everyone and welcome back to another Grounded video where today I'm hopping in and I'm answering 13 of your guys' most asked questions from the Discord. Yes, I have a Discord, link down in the description, from my comments on my videos and from my live streams. I thought I would make it easy, a one-stop shop for you guys to go in and get some of the most asked questions in the entire community answered right here in this video. So, let's kick it off guys with the most asked question and that is Sim. How do I open up this door that is underneath this cinder block that's over here? There is a lab that's underneath the cinder block that is all the way over here. Whoop, smack my mouse. It's right over here, okay? A lot of people have been asking me, Sim, how do you open this door? I can't get this door open. How do you open it? How do you open it? How do you open it? This is part of the story, guys. What you need to do in order to get here is you need to work your way all the way through the Undershed Lab, okay? Once you work your way all the way through the Undershed Lab, you're going to get an NPC that's going to come with you. You are going to go up here on top of the Javamatic and communicate with them. You're going to put everything for the embiggening cocktail in there, okay? And then you're going to try to turn it on. You're going to realize something is wrong and then the NPC is going to open the door for you. No spoilers, just know it's part of the story and it is coming. Speaking of part of the story, you guys have been asking me a ton as well. Sim, how do you unlock that awesome Sour Battle Axe? The Sour Battle Axe is probably the most powerful, stunning weapon in the game. It does a ton of damage as well, and it can be swung with a two, like a two-handed weapon. It's very, very powerful, and it can be used as an axe as well. But guys, if you want to unlock this one, the best thing that I can tell you without giving you any spoilers, build your way over the Moldark Castle and just explore it. You'll figure it out from over there. Just make sure you got your NPC first. That's all I'm going to say. But that is how you guys go and unlock the Sour Battle Axe. You need to go over there and explore that castle. Okay, I'm not going to give you any more spoilers on that. I'll make a complete video guiding you guys all the way through this and Moldar Castle in another video. But let's go through. Let's keep on going. So this next one that I want to talk to you guys about is questions on Black Widows. You guys have a ton of questions on Black Widows like, Sim, when do they respond? Between three and six days each, by the way. Um, and only three of them do respond. There are four locations for Black Widows in the game. There's one underneath the shed. Okay, over here. That one does not respawn, ever. There is one off the corner right over here that you need to blow up a rock and drop down into its nest. That one, every couple days, like I said, three to six in-game days is what I've noticed. Best way to find out, guys, is every day when you wake up in the morning, go through and use the resource scanner and search for parts for it. Okay, that's the best way to know if they've respawned. But there's one right here. There's one underneath this toolbox that's right here. And then there's one all the way over here. So, how often do they respond? Every three to six days. But, another question I get is, Sim, what's the best weapon in order to take out a brood mother? Or not a brood mother, I'm sorry, a black widow. Brood mother, spicy weapons. But that's a bonus for you guys. That's not one of the ones that I wanted to answer in today's video. What's the best weapon in order to take out a black widow? There's not really one. Y'all, there's really not. There's a bunch of ways to cheese them. Like, for instance, you can get the one that's over here stuck underneath its, uh, stuck in its tunnel over here. So that way you can shoot it with arrows. The one that's way over here, you can cheese it by standing on top of a rock and shooting it with arrows. And the one that's over here underneath here, you can actually tease it or cheese it by shooting it, running out of the tunnel, jumping up onto a leaf, but by hugging that back curve and it will fall into the water. And then once it's in the water, it can no longer attack and you're able to cheese it that way with arrows. So just a little bit of assistance for you guys. That's some ways you can cheese them, but mm, I don't think that you guys should really do that very often. All right, guys, another question that I get all the time is asking about the moths in the game, and that is Sim, where can I even find the moths? Well, like I said before, guys, one of the best ways in order to find any of the creatures in the game is after you fight one of them, you'll go through and use the resource scanner to look for their parts and it will show you where they are. But to show you guys as an example where each of the moths in the game are, there is one on top of the shed, on top of the log that is right over here. Not the shed, the log right over here. You have to climb all the way up the backside in order to get to it. I've made a video to show you guys how to get to this one. There's also one that is up here on top of this log over here. There is one that is on top of a light that is right about right here. This is probably the easiest of the moths to get to. And I would suggest you start off by going and fighting this one, okay? 
Not a bad location in order for you to fight a moth. It's up on top of a light post. There is one that is on top of the wheelbarrow. This is probably the most difficult one to get to because it's a huge jumping puzzle or a very, very large building task in order to get all the way up there. Then there is one that is on top of Moldork Castle. This one is a pain because it's surrounded by tiger mosquitoes, so you need to fight your way through an army of mosquitoes just to be able to get to this one and fight it. So, moths, pain in the butt. Hard to find? Not really. But hard to kill? No, not so much. It's more their environment that is kind of a pain when you want to go on and fight these things. All right, so this next one that you that I want to answer for you guys while I'm running over here to answer another question for you is, Sim, what is the best armor in the game? Because people have been asking me that since we first got the 1.0 update, they've been asking me, Sim, what is the new best armor in Grounded? Is there a set that is best for everything? Can I just build one and be God level? And the answer is depends. I know, that's a really weird way to say it, because technically it depends on your play style, okay? If you like to have, say, a one-handed build, there is a good armor set for you. If you have a two-handed build, there's a good armor set for you. If you like to be more of a brawler, there's a good armor set for you. If you like to never die, there's a good armor set for you. If you like to perfect block all the time, there is a good armor set for you. If you just want to poison everything, there's a good armor set for you. So. All in all, there is a ton of different builds that you can do that gives off a ton of different armor bonuses that can be proven to be the best armor in the game. I have made a ton of build videos for you guys. Go check those ones out. You guys might be able to find a build that to you is the best armor in the game. Now, leading off, this next question has to do with this lab that's over here. You guys are asking me, Sim, how do you get into this door? This door is also part of the story. You need to make your way all the way through the under shed lab. This is the back exit like we have over in the uh, Black Ant Hill base, how you have one way in and one way out when you work your way in. So while well, you have two ways in one way out, right? You can work your way through the top through the sandbox or you can work your way into the trash heap and then you work your way through fight the assistant manager get out of that back door same thing over here this is just a back exit to the base that is over there so that is what this is while we're over here though guys i do want to talk to you guys about staves because that is another question that you guys ask me all the time is sim how do you unlock the candy staves the candy staves are actually unlocked by going and finding the chip that is inside of the termite hill now the chip is guarded by the termite king and yes as a bonus question he does respawn it takes about eight in-game days for him to respawn but you have to go and you have to fight him it's sitting right behind him okay once you fight him and no well let me rephrase that you don't need to fight him you can actually get it without fighting him it's a little bit more tricky you just kind of got to run up past him get to him get around him and then run more or less try not to die and the problem is is his giant trove of little minions that's all with him but nonetheless you can run in here and you can grab that chip in order to get it you'll just run right up over here run up the tarp Run past the wolf spiders that are up here. Run past the mosquitoes that are up here. And then, not now that you've made it past those little dis those little dangers that are up there with mosquitoes and wolf spiders, now all you need to do is run your way all the way into a super deadly den full of bunches and bunches and bunches of termites, as you can see right here. Run along this back wall. Run through here. Chop down all of these guys right over here. And then make your way back into the back, right back over here like this, running past the giant termite king that is right here, and it's the chip that is right here on the ground. And that is how you unlock all of the candy stabs. Now you just need to run over to Burgle and unlock them. So as a thank you to everybody who's watched this far into the video, here's a couple extra bonus um, questions that I get asked all the time that aren't the most asked, but still, nonetheless, they're always good to be able to throw out some answers for you guys. First things first, the, uh, the best perk that I like to use. What perk do I never take off? I never take off Coup de Grass and Meat Shield anymore. Both of those perks are absolutely phenomenal. They're extra little things that you can have on your character that helps you do more damage. Other things like that, no, there's not a best weapon in the game either. That's not one of the ones I want to go over. They're just like, like for the armor, it's just all sets. It's part of the set bonuses. If you go watch those, it'll help you guys out. It's whatever you are comfortable with. Also, as another little extra for you, little bonus, 
tip for you who have watched this far, never forget to make yourself actual food and smoothies. The bonuses that you can get from them will make the game that much easier for you. But moving on to the 13 top most questions that I get asked, let's go over the Mantis. There's a few questions that get asked about the Mantis all the time to me. And that is, first of all, Sim, how do you find the Mantis Kebab? There is a Mantis Kebab you need in order to summon her, okay? Well, in order to summon the Mantis and in order to get said kebab, you need to make your way all the way in the Rotten Stump Outpost. It is all the way over here in the stump. That's way over here. And in order to open this door, you need to go into the pond over here, dropping off right here, diving straight down, turning around, and there's going to be a open, there's going to be a hatch in the wall. You need to work your way through there after you've beaten the assistant manager, and then there is a button through a door that you need to use the assistant manager key card to open, you press that button. After you have done that, you work your way back up here and you do a small jumping puzzle. There's a video for it on my channel. Go check out the, the How to Summon the Mantis video. That is how you unlock it. You just hop over a couple different things and you're able to get the Mantis Kebab recipe. And then you'll take that Broodmother parts, splinter, and I think it's fire ant heads, and you take those, you bring them over, and you can summon yourself up a mantis and fight it to your heart's content. Now, speaking of fighting it, you guys have asked me numerous times over and over and over again, Sim, what is the best weapon to fight the praying mantis? And before, I would have told you the Black Widow Dagger would have been the best way in order to fight her. That is no longer true. Now that the nerf to the Black Widow Dagger has happened, and the changes to the perks have happened due to the most recent update. I have changed this over to a salty club of the mother demon with apex predator on. Why? One, the mantis is weak to salty damage. It's the only thing it's not resistant to. Two, the club of the mother demon has generic damage, so it's not going to be resistant to it. Three. The, the venom that comes off of Apex Predator is insane, okay? Give it a try. And as a little added thing for you guys, if you're looking for a extra little boost for you, try out the Helmet of the Mother Demon as well. The Mask of the Mother Demon going down the sleek path, giving you Poison Nova, which literally puts out a little gas spurt in front of you of Poison, will also help you guys out. And it's got pretty decent defense as well. All right, so this next question that I get all the time is, Sim, what are some good places to build? Well, I actually went through and made a video showing off four awesome locations for you guys to go through and build in the upper yard. For if you guys are looking for a cool base location, a safe base location, or just another base location on where you can build somewhere up here, there's some fantastic spots that you can make some really, really cool bases. I've built things from wizard towers to tree houses to an entire castle all sorts of different things all within the upper yard area if you guys want to see exactly what i did go check out the video that i made on the channel i know plugging i'm sorry but they're there i'm not going to go over it again when i've already made a video for you guys on it so it's there go check it out all right and another one that i get before the last question that i get probably more than anything else the f this one is sim what do i need in order to 100 percent the game of grounded so far from what I have found out from trying to beat the game over and over and over again, is you are going to need every single one of the data chips. All of them, okay? There's a lot of them. You're going to need all of them, okay? You're going to need every single scabby. You're going to need every single milk molar. You're going to have to have completed every single mixer. You're going to have to have peeped every single creature. Not gold card. I haven't seen I've had a gold card yet. At least not what I've seen yet when I go in to beat the game. But you're going to need to peep at least every single creature. And you're going to need to finish the story with the bonus mission at the end as well. You're going to need to go through and do all of that. For the bonus mission, check out the mission all about Moldark. But there is going to be... All of those things you're going to need to handle in order to beat the game at 100%. So guys, go through, check it out, see if you guys can do it for yourself. Now, this last question I get goes right into that 100%ing it, guys. And that is, Sim, once I beat the game, can I keep playing my save? Yes. Yes, you can. It actually makes a save right before you beat the game. Uh, right before it happens and you actually can go through and keep playing right after that point 
right? And keep building in your backyard, keep exploring, trying to get that percentage up even more, stuff like that. If you have it 100% of the game, you definitely can go back and you can beat the game again and again and again. Don't worry, you can go beat the game and still play your save, guys. Don't worry. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching this one. I hope you guys enjoyed all the tips, all the questions, and everything like that. I really appreciate all of your guys' help as well by going through in those comments, in my Discord, in my live streams, and everywhere else you guys are asking me questions, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, heck, even on TikTok, I've been asked questions. But thank you guys all so very, very much. I do appreciate it. And if you guys could, hit that like button for me. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys aren't already. And also, please, don't forget to leave me a comment down below if you have any other questions you'd like me to answer. Thank you guys so much, and as always, I'll see all of you guys in the next one.